Notice how everybody is always telling you that their solution is plug and play. And of course, as engineers, we know that most of them really aren't. Because to make something really plug and play, you need plugs. No way around it. Lately, I've been hearing a lot about super integrated solutions like Xilinx's Zinc SOCs. These devices are super cool, flexible, powerful. They can do almost anything. But you still need plugs and connectors to hook them up to the outside world. Otherwise, you know, it's just a chip sitting there on a the table. Hey, what's going on in there? Yeah, can't tell. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Today, my guest is Mark Bell from TE. Yep, the folks who specialize in plugging and connecting our projects together. We're going to talk about an array of connectivity solutions that will help you connect your next awesome design to the outside world. Before we get started, remember to click the link. There you can download a free white paper that further expands on this topic. Hi, Mark. Thank you so much for joining me today. Great. So glad to be here, Amelia. So, Mark, we're hearing a lot about Xilinx's Zinc devices, but a lot of people don't know exactly what those can do. Should we start off and discuss a bit about what Zinc can do? Yes, Amelia, that's just a great place. The Zinc 7000 system on a chip helps embedded developers shorten their design cycle, reduce overall system cost, and define the balance between lower power and higher performance. Great. So let's talk about connecting. Anybody who is using these devices will need to connect them to something. <laughs> let's talk a bit about what kind of applications that people will be connecting Zinc devices into. Well, Amelia, Zinc solutions are found in many everyday products and applications spanning various industries. TE Connectivity designs and manufactures the products linking Zinc 7000 with the electronics found in radio applications, machine vision, wired and wireless backhaul. Okay, so let's dive in and talk about that first one. What about radio applications? Now, radios aren't the first thing someone might think about when we're talking about embedded applications. Well, of course not, but the latest radio designs, including cellular and the new long-term evolution standards, are based on multi-chip solutions that usually include a comm processor, a DSP, as well as a connectivity chip. Okay. Zinc simplifies that approach by allowing a three-chip-in-one migration, and TE offers a complete portfolio of standard antennas that complement the Zinc-based radio design. Okay, so it's great that we get three chips in one, but I'm still going to have to connect to the outside world, right, Mark? It seems like some of those really pose some serious challenges for connectivity, particularly that antenna part. Well, yes, it does. But TE offers a complete portfolio of standard antennas that complement the zinc-based radio design. We see the market needs a wide range of standard antennas for the popular bands. And customers are asking for a variety of packaging types, like surface mount, tab mount, and chassis mount. All right, Mark, I am not an antenna expert, and I think a lot of people designing these kind of embedded applications are a little scared of that part. Tell me what you guys bring to the antenna party. We bring off-the-shelf antennas that are small and light and are well characterized with little or no matching components needed for optimal performance. Also, tooling and lead time are eliminated since most antennas are in stock at Avnet. They can also supply samples and evaluation boards upon request. Okay, so I think I understand the antenna thing pretty well, but let's switch from our ears to our eyes. I remember you mentioned that one of the exciting applications for Zinc is machine vision. Uh, let's talk about that. Well, modern machine vision systems rapidly detect and inspect manufacturing lines for quality control. Yeah. The Zinc I.O. banks are configurable for a variety of camera inputs and display outputs common in these systems. Okay. And Zinc has the necessary hardware and IP solutions enabling communication over industrial communication protocols like Ethernet. Uh, okay, so if I'm going to be communicating with protocols like industrial Ethernet, but you surely can't use a standard Ethernet solution on a factory floor, right? 
No, no. While RJ45 is a reliable industrial communication standard, it requires a rugged design, often sealed, to survive the harsh environment on the factory floor. Ah, okay. So probably a lot of applications need this same kind of ruggedized connectivity, right? Absolutely. And today, manufacturing has to be more of everything. More reliable, more automated, more flexible, more scalable, more decentralized, and of course, more connected. Also, embedding intelligence across the factory floor and the migration of the information technologies and applications to the field requires a secure and predictable transport of signal, data, and power. And TE provides reliable solutions that are user-friendly and standards-based. And this is a lot more than just Ethernet, right? That's right, Amelia. It's not just Ethernet. Network factories communicate via USB and other controller area network protocols. TE has solutions for those also. Okay, so I think that last application area you mentioned was wireless and wired backhaul. Now, how does Zinc play in those applications? Almost in the same way, Amelia. Wired and wireless backhaul designs are also traditionally based on multi-chip solutions. The application traditionally includes a host CPU, a network processor, a timing management solution, and a network Mac. Zinc's configurability and integrated options concentrate the design into a single chip. Additionally, Zinc can support multi-gigabit I.O. protocols found over backplanes and the front panel and backhaul applications. There, TE's extensive portfolio of pluggable I.O. and innovative backplane interconnects route these signals to the outside world. So some of those have to operate at crazy fast speeds. What kind of solutions do you guys have to help me with that? Those crazy speeds deliver the rich user experience we expect, so the individual channel speeds must therefore increase. Sure. However, system bottlenecks can occur when the electrical performance of system interconnects are the limiting factor. Hmm. TE Connectivity has a solution for today's requirements and tomorrow's even more sophisticated systems. So as people start wanting to have more information at their fingertips, you know, while they're traveling around, they want to be able to access movies or football games or watch YouTube videos. They really need to be able to have all that information streaming to them wirelessly. They need to be able to have that information quickly. Really with that requires a lot of infrastructure updates through the data centers. Data rates have to get faster. You know, power has to stay at the same levels or get lower. So as all of our customers are working on their system designs, they focus on the backplane. It really is the secret sauce that makes them different than their competition. So adding Strata Whisper to your backplane design gives you a leg up because it's a better performing part. 25 gigs a unique data rate. As you're doing system design at 25 gig, these chips are still trying to send signal to each other. But now the printed circuit board, the traces inside of that, they're too lossy. You can't get the signal from one chip to another. We really got to a point where we realized noise in a system is going to have a dramatic effect on the design moving forward. Strata Whisper changes a lot of aspects of our customers' designs. And what makes it so great for them is, one, the, the signal integrity is excellent. And second, the mechanical robustness of it allows for our customers to do a lot more things than what they used to before. One aspect of the design that's very unique is most connector designs have the pairs stacked on top of each other vertically. Whisper, we took an innovative approach in rotating the, the pair 90 degrees so that they stack horizontally on top of each other. This gives a lot of advantage because now we're removing the skew out of the design. Once we realized that we could shield this product so that we would reduce the noise dramatically in it, that was really the moment when we realized we had a new, innovative, and really game-changing product. So dramatically reducing the noise in Strata Whisper gives a lot of different flexibility options to our customers. It allows them to do architecture styles that they couldn't do before, such as cable assembly or direct plug orthogonal. And it allows them to consider densely packing connectors more than what they could in the past. Basically allows for a more dense system, which allows for more signal to be sent out of one system. Our customers can decide to stick with a printed circuit board design. It still gives you a, an excellent performing part through your backplane design. Alternatively, they can look at doing a cable backplane solution as well. 
removing that printed circuit board and connecting the two connectors with cable in between them, offering you a design that can allow more airflow, maybe can allow a better signal integrity performance, and allow you to send your signal a much longer distance. When you're designing a system, your focus is really on that data right at the moment, and you're trying to make sure you have the best design possible. One of the greatest benefits Whisper gives you is you're not just designing for 25 gig, you're designing a connector in that allows you to go from 25 gig up to 40 gig. And your data centers get that extra benefit of not having to buy a new system when they upgrade to the next speed, to the next data rate. They get the ability to just maybe upgrade some cars instead to go from 10 to 20 to 40 gigabit per second. And so with that design flexibility that Strata Whisper offers, whether it's reducing power, improving airflow, getting better signal integrity, you know, all of that helps our customers improve the data center. All right, Mark, explain more about the bottlenecks in the back plane here. I'm a bit confused about what the issues at play may be. Well, as Doug said, today's high-speed interconnects are more critical than ever, and Strata Whisper was engineered from the PC footprint up and out to provide the cleanest signals possible in a robust, forgiving mechanical package. Okay. For electrical engineers, TE designed Strata Whisper to provide a nearly transparent electrical path for high-speed differential pairs. And we haven't forgotten the mechanical engineers. Good. They know that holding card cage tolerances to assure alignment and fully seated connectors for signal integrity can be very difficult and very expensive. My mechanical engineers will be happy to hear that. Okay, Mark, what about tomorrow? How is this going to evolve as my system evolves? TE has that covered too, with solutions for nearly any architecture and supporting 100 ohm as well as 85 ohm systems. Now our engineers have deep and broad experience, plus the advanced simulation tools required that assure your project moves from concept to deployment in the shortest time and will perform as you intended. Excellent. So one of the things I know about the future is that I'm going to need a lot of data moving through the backplane. Oh yeah, that bandwidth through the backplane and the line cards requires fat pipes for input and output to deliver ultimate system performance. Sure. Well now fortunately the key standards organizations have agreed upon uniform signaling protocols and the mechanical interfaces that allow different manufacturers equipment to communicate. So depending on the way the channels are aggregated and the reach needed, there are a variety of I.O. solutions. So I see there are a lot of standard mechanical form factors, but what if I need to change my design or upgrade for some reason? Well, a pluggable I.O. interface allows significant advantages when you want configuration options depending on various data rates, distances, and the protocols. For instance, in short reach, shelf-to-shelf -shelf applications, copper cabling may be suitable. Mm -hmm. In the longer reach rack-to-rack -rack applications, copper insertion losses may require optical interconnects. Also, a standardized pluggable I.O. interface allows options for fiber versus copper links, plus accessory options such as light pipes for easy port ID or heat sinks for transceiver thermal management. Lastly, depending on the equipment and the application, the I.O. solution could be single port with two channels or even ganged or even stacked with multiple channels. Amelia, whatever the requirement, TE has an I.O. solution and cables for your application. Excellent. So what do I do if I want more information on a specific protocol or what do I need to have nailed down for my particular application? Right, Amelia, the main thing we need to know is what standard and what data rate is required. Okay. Then do you have a specific density requirement? We need to know your height restrictions, your card restrictions, so we can fit the number of ports required to meet those requirements. Makes sense. We need to know if you need light pipes for port identification to tell about port activity or for failure. Mm. We need to know if your transceivers will require thermal dissipation. How many watts will they be dissipating? And that, of course, will depend on the reach and the power of those transceivers. Sure. And lastly, what about your cable requirements? Can you use copper? less expensive but shorter reach or will you require optical for longer reach excellent well i think that's all i have time for today thank you so much for joining me mark it was nice to be here thank you 
Before we go, don't forget to click that link. There you can download a free white paper that further expands on this topic. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton. For more Chalk Talks, check out the EE Journal YouTube channel or the on-demand section of eejournal.com.